Hey, hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to graph a piecewise function. And for uh, for this example, um, we're going to look at this function, which comes from problem 39 in section 1.2. All right. So we have the um, right. We have our piecewise function. Okay. So again, what a piecewise function is means that there are several components, and each component has a restriction on a domain. That's basically what a piecewise function is. Um, they are used a lot in calculus um, and definitely a lot of applications in engineering, okay? For example, like if you, let's say, you know, as we all know, uh, computers, um, you know, they work with uh, basically input and output, right? So you, you, even when you're starting to work on a computer, you turn on and then turn off one and zero, right? So you can actually represent that as a piecewise function, okay? So anyway, let's go back here, okay? Um, in this case, we're working, or if you look at each component here, they are linear functions, okay? Um, and so uh, what's nice about linear functions is that um, they have, right, uh, we can use their slope and y-intercept to plot them, right, to graph, those, to graph those functions. Okay, so starting over here, let's look at the first one. We have 2x minus 1, okay? Um, and this is, remember, if you recall, this is in what's called slope-intercept form, that y equals mx plus b form that you remember from algebra, okay? Um, and then um, from there, we have our slope, right? So, and then your y-intercept, which in this case is 0 minus 1, okay? So you never want to say that the y-intercept is just the number, you know? So you don't want to say y-intercept is negative 1. You have to say it as a coordinate, okay? All right, or especially when writing it down, okay? So make sure that if you're, whenever you are identifying the wider set, make sure you write it as a coordinate, okay? So again, that just tells you where the function is going to cross or touch the y-axis, okay? So when x is zero, we get negative one, okay? All right, so we, so we can use this information. Like I said, we can use this information to help us come up with a graph. Okay, so we're going to plot 0 minus 1. Okay. So it's going to be about here somewhere. And then we can use our slope to come up with the second point. Because remember, to in order to graph a line, we need at least, right? We need at least two points. Right? Okay. Okay, so there's my point. Right, zero, negative one, and then our slope is two. And remember, slope is just the rise over the run, right? It's the, basically, it's the measure of the slant of the, of the line, okay? Okay, so two, that can be expressed as two over one. So we can always take an integer and express it as a, what's called a rational, in rational form. So a rational number just means you have a um, integer divided by another integer, okay? So there's your rise. And there's your run, okay? So we're gonna go up two, okay, from the, from the y-intercept. So here's, so here's where we are, okay? And then we're gonna go up two units, okay? So that's the rise, one and then two. So that puts us here. Now we're gonna go over one unit, okay? That's what that's telling us. So we're gonna go up two and then over one. So we're about there, okay? Okay, so now we have our two points, okay? So got my straight edge here because I'm not very good at just drawing drawing lines with just my free hand. So okay. Well, something like this. Okay. Again, we're gonna go back and look at our restrictions, clean up a little bit. All right, now for the other part, we have x plus one, which is the same as one plus x, okay? And here's our slope, okay? It's written in slope intercept form, okay? So there's a one, there's a, right, there's a hidden one there, that's our slope, and then our y-intercept is gonna be zero one, okay? So we can, again, so we can plot the y-intercept and then use the slope to obtain the second value. Okay, okay, zero, one, so, when x is zero, y is one. So it's gonna be here. And then we're gonna go up one, right? Okay. 
and then over one, okay? Because one can be expressed as one over one. Just like what we did here, you put it, right? If it's an integer, just put it over one. And that gives us, um, basically that helps us interpret the uh, slope, okay? In terms of, in, in the form of rise over run, okay? So we have one and then over one here. Okay, so. So somewhere right there. Okay, um, so I'm gonna use my gonna use my straight edge here to plot or to plot this, connect these two dots, these two coordinates. Okay. All right, so let's take a look back, see what we have. Okay. Uh, by the way, whenever you're graphing, uh, whenever you're graphing something like this, okay, um, graphing a function. Um, always make sure to label your axis. It's very important. Okay. Um, okay. It's just, it's so that that way the reader knows exactly, um, you know, what the X axis and what the Y axis is. Okay. Because sometimes, um, some cases, um, sometimes, you know, we may use this, you know, as a dependent axis and this as a, as the independent axis. So it's very important to label, you know, to label your components. Okay. All right. All right, so here we have, this is going to be y equals two x minus one, okay? And then we have the other one, x plus one. Okay, so now what we have to do is go back and look at our restrictions, okay? So again, this is saying that when x is strictly when x is strictly less than one, it's going to take on this form, two x minus one. So here's our graph of two x minus one. Here's x equals one. So we can go ahead and erase everything, right? We can erase the, we can erase this part after x equals to one. And so, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase that part. Okay. All right. By the way, it's good. That's why it's good to when you're doing your when you're doing these use a you use a pencil, okay. And then for the other part, we have one plus x when x is bigger or equal to one, okay. All right. So here's x plus one. So we keep everything. Right? We keep everything here. There's x equals one, and I'm gonna go ahead and erase everything here. Okay, now we're not quite done yet, okay, because we have to see what's happening at exactly x equals to one. So to help us, to help us with that, um, what we can do is we can evaluate the function, right? Evaluate the function of one. And so again, it's going to use this part, right? Because when this is saying when x is exactly one, um, we use this piece. So plugging in one, for x, you're going to get two. Okay, so remember that just means that's going to be our coordinate one two. So that is so on the graph that's defined. Okay, so we're going to so basically we indicate that with a solid point. Okay, and so then we have this. Okay, and then what about down here? What about this point? Well. Remember, going back here, this is saying when x is strictly less than one. And so we're gonna, so this becomes a whole now. Right? So we indicate that with, with a circle like that. Right? So I'm just gonna kind of mark over this. And that's basically the graph of our function. Again, remember that, okay, in order you have to. We have to look closely at what's going on here. Okay, so by evaluating the function at this point, right, we get two here. So we use this component. So when x is one, we get exactly the output two of two. Okay, and then that means this point is open because there's right. This is strictly less than one. Okay. All right. So there's the um, so there's the result. Okay. Right. Okay. 
you have any questions, uh, please send me an email. Okay.